We are seeing a decline in biodiversity and an increase in species extinction at the moment, which is why this is really important. So environmental DNA, or eDNA, is genetic material shed by plants and animals and fungi into the air in the form of cells or skin or hair, spores, even pollen, and we're able to capture them in different types of samples, in different types of medium, and then use this as a measure of the biodiversity in the area. This is a really valuable technique for biodiversity monitoring because it's non-invasive, so it doesn't involve a person kind of going into a habitat or it doesn't beyond leaving a sampler there, but it's really timely due to the current biodiversity decline that we're seeing. And it's really valuable for things like monitoring the success of a species introduction to an area as well. So these methods give us scope to detect invasive species, endangered species, and there's also scope beyond the biodiversity side of things to measure diseases, so different pathogens in the air, we can also detect those, and it could be used as some sort of early warning system as well. So this is a fairly established technique in aquatic environments and taking water samples, for example. And one example of this in practice is where ecologists can do, go out and do an ecological survey of a habitat, take a water sample, then this can be analysed for um, eDNA and it can tell you whether or not that a great crested newt is in that environment, for example. So that's kind of for aquatic environments and then the techniques are much newer in the sense of measuring airborne eDNA. So there's lots of scope and potential and also many questions to answer in the sense of airborne environments, but there's yeah lots of research going on in this area. So as the Air Quality and Aerosol Metrology Group at MPL, we're the experts in air quality monitoring. So this almost came about as an accident in that we are already taking samples of the air across the whole of the UK um, to analyse different types of pollutants in the air. And we kind of found out that we're able to analyse those same samples for eDNA as a measure of biodiversity. So it's almost come about as an accident that the infrastructure that already exists for air quality monitoring is perfect for this airborne eDNA analysis. So some preliminary studies of these air quality filters that we receive showed that we're we were able to detect over 180 species of plants and animals and fungi just from a couple of samples that hadn't necessarily been stored in any particular conditions. They were just historical samples that we had. So this has led into a whole new avenue of research whereby we're using the UK heavy metals network as a measure of biodiversity across the UK and over time as well. So there are sites across the whole UK measuring 365 days a year, and these samples are sent back to us at MPL. We're able to then subsample these samples and they're sent off for analysis. So there's samplers um, in a whole range of environments. Some are in industrial locations or rural settings and urban settings as well. So we can get a measure of biodiversity across lots of different environments. This is a really exciting field, but there's still lots of questions that need to be answered. One of which is when we get a, a kind of account of a species on our sample, we currently don't know how far away that species might have been from where it was detected or how long ago it was there. So there's lots of research to do in this area, but if we can understand how big the particles are that we're collecting or um, what form they're in, it might help us to answer that question. Another question that we have is how the samples should be stored. So is there kind of, how quickly does the DNA degrade? Is there a detriment to our sampling if the samples aren't frozen immediately? So there's lots of research to do in this area still.